Hello and welcome. So as you can see on the screen, the today's point for discussion is verification of Compendial procedure. So in case if you decided to use the Compendial test procedure for your product, then you need to conduct certain kind of verification. So what kind of parameters needs to be assessed as a part of verification? with respect to the type of analytical test procedure will be discussed throughout this presentation. So before we talk about the, the parameters and the type of test procedure, let us first understand what is the first source of guidance as per as verification of compendial procedures. Compendial procedures means what? The procedures which are available into a pharmacopoeial monograph maybe USP, EP, BP or Japanese pharmacopoeia. That is called as a compendial procedure. It may be a procedure for assay or procedure for dissolution for your product. So USP General 1226 provides a guidance on verification of the compendial procedures. You need to also understand one important information that whenever the test procedure is mentioned into a monograph that already gets properly validated and then it's get published into a monograph that means the procedures which are given into a monograph have been already validated with this scientific practice so in case if you want to use that same test procedure without making any change you need not to validate the test procedure again I mean, in case if you decide to use the monograph test procedure or compendial procedure, then you need not to conduct the validation of that procedure one more time. Does that mean you can use that procedure without even conducting anything, without uh, understanding its suitability? Certainly not. You have to understand whether the compendial procedure is really suitable for your use of or the purpose and that's where the verification assessment comes into a picture so verification assessment is going to confirm whether the compendial test procedure is suitable for your purpose or not while verification you need to also give a thought on drug substances synthetic route in case if you are using the api test procedure or in case if you are using a method for the drug product, then you need to also consider the method of manufacture of the drug product. Now why these two things are very important? Because the synthetic route can give a altogether different kind of impurity profile. Your degradation pathway probably may be similar, but the process impurities may get different. And hence, you need to understand whether the root of synthesis of your manufacturer and probably the manufacturer of the compendial test procedure is similar or not. In the same way, what is the manufacturing procedure of your drug product? In terms of the process used, in terms of the excipient used during the manufacturing of the drug product. Now, why this is important? Because the, the composition, the sample matrix can also play a very critical role, maybe in terms of the extraction process, maybe in terms of the degradation of the drug substance into a drug product. And overall, this can impact onto the performance of your monograph method. So one has to be very, very clear on drug substances, synthetic route, and the manufacturing process of the drug product. As close you are with the monograph, you will be at the better situation in terms of meeting the requirement. However, you try to verify the compendial procedure, but in case if you are not able to meet the requirement, then you have no option but to develop an alternative test procedure and then you can use that test procedure only after validating. So let us understand, you know, what are the parameters one has to consider during verification of compendial procedure. So these are the seven parameters people generally consider for the validation purpose. Maybe specificity, precision, and again the precision when I talk, it will 
consist of repeatability and intermediate precision or reproducibility. LOD, LOQ stand for limit of detection and limit of quantitation, then linearity, accuracy, range, and the robustness. Let us talk about the first uh, test procedure that is the identification. Let us say you have identification by TLC, identification by FTIR. Now you have a question if I am using the same monograph method, compendial procedure, do I need to conduct all the validation parameters? So, as such, for identification, even during the validation, you have to conduct only the specificity. And hence, specificity is recommended recommended even for the verification activity i hope you are clear on the first parameter that is first uh, analytical test procedure that is identification and which parameter needs to be conducted during the verification let us now talk about the second test procedure that is the impurity where you are not going to quantify the the impurity present into a given sample but you are just going to conduct the limit test and in that situation you need to conduct uh, two parameters as a part of verification the very first one is specificity and then the second parameter can be the limit of detection limit of quantitation is not possible for the impurity with the limit test like let us say impurity a by tlc procedure you are only going to confirm whether the content of impurity is below its given specification. That is called as the limit test. So in case if you have to, vary, if you have to verify the limit test uh, for impurity, two parameters are proposed. The first one is specificity and the second one is limit of detection. Even limit of quantitation is not possible for the limit test. So I hope you are now clear on verification parameters for identification test and impurity limit test. Let us uh, talk about the third important test which is the impurity but it is the quantification technique now. For example, the uh, related substances for a paracetamol tablet by using HPLC technique. In that case, you will be quantifying the impurity present into a sample. So, what parameters are proposed during the verification and share they are. You are expected to conduct specificity, precision, LOD, LOQ, accuracy and uh, robustness, not all the parameters. But you can see in the remark that the filter compatibility in case if you are using the filter paper for sample treatment and solution stability for both test and standard solution are proposed. Remaining robustness parameter like uh, pH variation, organic content variation into a mobile phase, maybe the column temperature variation, flow variation are not really required to be assessed during the verification process. And uh, the specificity, you may be thinking in case of let us say drug product, I may think about understanding the interference from the blank, understanding the interference from the respective impurity or placebo as a part of the specificity now that may suffice the requirement but in, in case if uh, you have a different synthesis route of the uh, api or in case if there is a different manufacturing processes for the drug product or if there is a different excipients present into a drug product and that may trigger a different degradation pathways in that situation the forced degradation can be conducted isn't it the forced degradation also can become the one of the necessary parameter so let us talk about the the next uh, test parameter that is the assay it can be dissolution or contain or the potency of the drug product so what parameters are recommended during verification the specificity precision, accuracy and then the fourth parameter can be a robustness but not all the parameters the way I explained during the impurity quantification test you have to only conduct filter compatibility if you are using the filter paper for the sample treatment and solution stability for both test and the standard. So these are the parameters 
with respect to the different types of the test procedures identification impurity limit test impurity quantification assay and dissolution like performance uh, test procedures so do we need to verify all compendial procedures because uh, you are not only going to use identification or impurity or assay compendial procedures there are several compendial procedures you are using like ph meter ph measurement loss on drying so do we need to verify all those compendial procedures again 1226 has given the reference and according to the 1226 general chapter no verification is not required for basic compendial test procedures now what are the examples of basic compendial test procedures so here here are they loss on drying residue on ignition various wet chemical procedures such as acid value simple instrumental determination such as ph meters etc in that case you need not to verify the verify this compendial test procedures so before i conclude this video let me first introduce myself my name is bhaskar dapte i am the founder of pharma growth Hub. And I am on the mission to give the absolute clarity about various analytical topics to the pharmaceutical professionals. And many pharmaceutical professionals are getting heavily benefited once they join the Pharma Growth Hub. So in case if you are also interested to accelerate your career growth, build your confidence, in cash the opportunities, do consider joining the Pharma Growth Hub. So there is an offer given in the description. You can go through the description and take the action i'm waiting to welcome you on the pharma growth hub board thank you so much